Hi, I'm Dean Johnson, this Sandy Springs Community Church, and we are live at five. We're so glad you're with us. Hey, I got a question for you. Are you a spiritual person? Are you a spiritual person? We're going to uh, be broadcasting to 10,000 people this week, and the first two or 300 of you will be listening to this first 60 seconds. And I just want to know, do you consider yourself a spiritual person? I uh, have a, a friend that I've worked with who is uh, someone who thinks that beauty is all there is. He looks at the world, he's an interior designer, he does a great job, but beauty is his God. Everything he sees, uh, he takes in art, uh, symphonies, beautiful architecture, uh, beauty is his God and nothing else matters. So hes I don't even think he's spiritual in that regard, but are you spiritual? And if you are spiritual, then who defines what is beautiful for you? I believe that Jesus is beautiful. That's what I believe. I, I believe that I'm a spiritual person, but I'm spiritual because Jesus has made me alive. He's made me alive because he came as a baby. He rose from the cross, dying in my place so that my sins could be forgiven and gave me new life by believing with my mouth uh, and confessing to you right now that I believe that. And in my heart, I believe that he is God, the son of God then I have been saved based on what the Bible says and based on what I see in my life and what I see in other people's lives who have confessed Jesus. So Jesus is beautiful to me. And the world that he has created is beautiful. There is truth in beauty because Jesus created that. So my friend's beauty in this world is true, but it's only true because Jesus made it. So if you would like to know beauty like Jesus has created you to know beauty, then you can receive him by simply saying, God, uh, I believe that you came, sent your son, for all who believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life, and that Jesus is my God, that I'll turn from my sin, and I'll believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and you'll be saved. So that's all you got to do. We can pray right now, and you can experience this beauty of Jesus. Thanks, God, that you love us. Thank you that you have come into our life to give us uh, uh, beauty, to give us your beauty and to give us a life everlasting, a life of abundance, not only just in this physical world, but in, in, in an eternal world, a world hereafter where we can uh, stand in awe of you and worship you and praise you and just uh, revel in the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone here to Sandy Springs Community Church. We are going to spend the next few minutes um, bridging between uh, uh, the road to Jerusalem. We talked about the cross. Easter is kind of just a few weeks away from us. And in the Jewish festivals, uh, the, um, the next festival that comes is 50 days later, which is Pentecost. And um, that uh, is the festival of weeks. There's seven weeks uh, and one day. Uh, to Pentecost, that is the next festival. And so uh, the Jews are coming back into Jerusalem to celebrate another festival. And that's kind of where our story uh, is going to take us today. We're gonna bridge from the roads to the cross, the roads to Jerusalem, which we've been uh, talking about for four or five weeks. And uh, now we're gonna enter into what is going to be the future road that all Christians will take, the road that the church will take. So this is, a, this is a new world. This is a new and living way that we entered into because of the cross. We left, we left off with the resurrection, Jesus walking down the road to uh, Emmaus, talking to uh, two of his disciples. We learned what it was then to go and to be a witness. Go is just a witness of Jesus and a follower of Jesus. We talked about that last week. So as Jesus uh, rose from the dead, he, he stayed with his disciples and over 500 people uh, are eyewitness accounts of Jesus. And he was here with us for 40 days after he rose from the dead. So as our story picks up, Jesus is walking uh, with his disciples. He's eating with them. He has this heavenly body. So he's kind of uh, already uh, in this new realm that we talked about. Jesus has come from the heavenly realm to the earthly realm, and he is now in a, in a heavenly body, but still in the earthly realm. And as our story will unfold today, he will enter back into the heavenly realm. We will be left here as we are uh, today still in this earthly realm, but with uh, the heavenly realm is, is uh, in our four front. It's in, it's, it's in our hearts. It's, it's what our life is about. It's this heavenly realm that Jesus um, 
has invited us to enter into with him and because of him. So uh, Jesus began both to do and to teach. That was Luke. So he, he began both to do and to teach. So he started his ministry while he walked here as, as a man, all man, all God. Jesus walked and began his ministry. And he did so in this human body. And, and the book of Acts, which is where we're going now, uh, tells us that Jesus continued to do and teach through his spiritual body, the church. So you and I have become, as members of his spiritual body, uh, as, as we've entered into his church, as we've received him as Lord and life, then we've entered into his spiritual body, which is the church. And his work continues to do and to teach through us, through you and through me. Through those of us that claim Jesus as Lord and Savior and have joined a body into the body of believers, we are now his spiritual body. Is that not um, beyond our understanding? To, uh, to comprehend that Jesus has left us now as his body uh, to finish his work, as his hands and feet to, uh, to seek and save the lost in a lost and dying world. Now, there's no way we can do that in and of ourselves. We, we need each other and we need really uh, something outside of ourselves to do that. We just can't muster up the strength to go and save the lost. It's really only done by God himself, and he does it through his Holy Spirit. So we're going to see that there's this, there's this transition that goes from Jesus walking this earth as a man to being crucified, resurrected, and then continuing for 40 more days in a resurrected body, in a heavenly body. Uh, he would eat with his disciples, but he would also wasn't fully recognizable by his, body, by his, uh, but by his disciples. And and yet he would just kind of appear and then he would disappear at the same time. So there, there's something about this heavenly body that Jesus lived in for, for 40 more days that may be a hint to what our future might be like. And so um, just think about this for a second one more time before we leave this. Jesus began both to do and to teach in his human body. And the book of Acts tells us that Jesus continued to do and to teach through his spiritual body, the church. That's you and I bound together as one in his, hum in his eternal uh, body that was left behind, the church, to do his work. Therefore, go with power. We've been talking about, therefore, go, those, those words of Jesus. As you are going, wherever you are, you are a, a witness, a representative, an ambassador for Jesus. So the church is forming um, as an instrument. So at that time, the, the church had not formed yet. They, they, uh, uh, the story will unfold where um, the disciples were still in the upper room. So if Jesus was here for 40 days and, and ascended, and the Holy Spirit doesn't come until 50 days, so there was a 10-day period there where, where the disciples were just together praying in the upper room. They really didn't know what was going on. They didn't know really what the church was going to be. They didn't know what this new road was going to be that they were traveling. So kind of Jesus left them to, 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 to wait. They had to be patient and wait. So I think that says a lot for us sometimes when we just have to be patient and wait. I'm going to just read scripture for a little bit today. Then I'm going to turn back and we'll talk a little bit about it. So I'm going to start in Acts um, Chapter 1, verse 6. So when they had come together, they began asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time that you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know the periods or the time or the appointed times which the Father has sent by his own authority. Um, I'm just going to keep reading verse 8. But you will receive power, and when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and as far as the remotest part of the earth. Verse 9. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were watching, and a cloud took him up out of their sight. And then going on to chapter 2. Uh, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a noise like a violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
and tongues that looked like fire appeared on them, distributing uh, themselves, and a tongue rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with different tongues as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. So, so what is what is going on here? We we kind of prefaced it a little bit. Uh, we we left off uh, Jesus in his resurrected body, and uh, and he's he's with them. He he still is with them here in the last forty days that he walked together. But the important part, I think we want to take away today in, a, in kind of a brief message, uh, kind of a bridge message between where Jesus came and when he left, when the Holy Spirit came and then the church began. So we're closing one chapter with Jesus's ministry, earthly ministry, and we're opening a new chapter with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So this is, the, this is like a, a bridge message between what's, what's happened to prepare us and what's going to happen in the future and until today. Uh, so they, they, I think what's interesting is they were always coming together. I think there's, there's something about when Christians come together that, that it's almost like there's, there's more power that, that comes together when Christians are together. When brothers and sisters in Christ are together, we, we are forming the family of, the, of Jesus. We, we are. We're, we're adopted into his family. We are his co-heirs. We are brothers and sisters, uh, spiritually speaking, with Jesus. And so when we come together, there's power. There's power when we're walking individually because now we have the Holy Spirit. But when we come together, that, that Spirit just builds and builds and builds. So it's important uh, to come together. So they had come together, and, uh, and Jesus was still with them. And they asked him, you know, one last time, you know, are you, is, are you going to take over now? They were still... They still didn't understand it, even after the even after the crucifixion, after the resurrection. They still wanted him to be a military conqueror. They wanted a theocracy where where God was going to come and take over the earth, and they still didn't get it. So this was their last ditch effort to try to uh, convince Jesus, I guess, that uh, he needed to be their king. And uh, uh, and I think the Holy Spirit kind of put an end. <laughs> into that question they realized that there was something more and something better for them uh, than Jesus becoming their king uh, earthly in an earthly way he became their heavenly king and their eternal king their lord of lords it is not for you to know these time periods so this was um, uh, this was uh, Jesus basically saying I am going to be king remember he said that to Pilate but he he's going to be a king of a different realm so I love that because we we, we love the uh, we love Thor and the fact that he's he's in a different realm. But it's it, it's all the stories that we read and listen to all come from the Bible. They're they're all generated from the creative uh, nature that we all have that God gave us. So God really creates all these wonderful stories, anyways, and, and the minds of the people that write them. So 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 Thor is able to look down at this realm, and now Jesus is is being ascended into this new realm where we we have uh, uh, the ability to go with him we uh, enter this new realm as well as Christians so we we are here the Bible says seated in this room physically we can we can acknowledge that we're all in this room and yet the Bible also tells us that we are in Christ seated at the right hand of the Father so we're we're now in this almost this dualistic um, uh, place we're we're in christ in heaven in a new realm but physically we're still in our earth suits in this earthly realm so we, we find ourselves um in the now not yet i like to say so um while we're in this now not yet while we're still in these earth suits why our while our spirits are still really confined to this fallen world that christ is going to come back to uh, regain us and bring a new heaven and a new earth so this this fallen world will be made new and, and we will be um, uh, reigning with Jesus in this new heaven and this new earth um, so uh, it's not like some wonderful opportunity we have to kind of earn our way into some position of power we got that because of what Jesus' love did for us on the cross. We didn't have to earn that or deserve that. Uh, there's nothing we can do to claim that as, as something uh, that we can 
we did or uh, can measure. Only Jesus' love uh, did that for us. And so we're just told to go. I mean, he, he simply just tells us to be his our hands and feet, just to go. And he says to witness. We are to witness of him. Well, what is a witness? Somebody that, that, that knows or has seen something and can give a testimony of it. So we're all called to test to be uh, uh, give our testimony. Well, it's interesting though that the old English word that comes from the Greek word witness is martyr. So martyr is a root out of the old out of the out of the Greek witness. So when we give our witness, we're really we need to face the fact that we're really martyrs in this world. We're we're we're, we're aliens here now. If you've entered into Christ, the full story, folks, is, is that you don't belong here anymore. This is not your home. So quit trying to make it your home. Tr quit trying to make living on this world better. It's not going to get better. Your, your, your next elected politician is not going to make this world any better. Your next high-paying job or your next car or your next sporting event is not going to make your life any better. Only Jesus can make your life better. And, and, and he is not going to make your life better here on earth, but he's going to make your life better eternally because you're going to be with him. Now, he has left us to bring as many as we can bring with us. That is what go and be a witness means. It, it means to go and be a martyr for Jesus. Now, that's not something that we want to do necessarily. It's not something that I would say we would all sign up for, but if we're going to be like Christ who died on the cross, we're going to have to pick up our crosses every day. And when circumstances don't go our way, yeah, sometimes we get sad. Yeah, sometimes we have circumstances that are painful. Um, but to be a witness is to say, you know what? I'm going to trust Jesus through this circumstance. I'm going to love others through these these painful times. I'm going to love others like like Luke said when um, he he had a, a rough childhood, um, and yet God has continued to use that experience for him, and he's able to love other people now that are going through rough times because he can relate to them. He's he can take his story and. and he can tell his story alongside their story, and then they can look at him as a witness, as a martyr for Jesus, and they can have hope, and they can see the love that's in him, and they can, des they can, they can receive that love, because Luke is here with us today. He's part of, part of this church, and he's, he's empowered by the Holy Spirit, and he brings power into this room with us, and his power... Um, you have received that same power. It's not optional. You have it. It's yours. What are you going to do with it? You shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea, Samaria, and to the remotest parts of the earth. That's from Georgia to uh, Sandy Springs to uh, Alpharetta and beyond, um, to the southeast, to the California, and all around the world. God breathed new life on us and we received power and after he had said these things he was lifted up while they were watching and a cloud took him up out of their sight so this is really jesus if we if we kind of think about the storyline that we've been going with the bifrost from uh from the story um with thor that jesus really just left our realm and entered back into the heavenly realm uh, they watched him go up into the clouds. And um, a footnote here, that's how he's coming back. He's coming back from that heavenly realm to, to receive his church, to receive you and I, those who have received him as Lord, Savior, and life. He's coming back from that in that same, uh, same way to get us. And we too then will enter into that heavenly realm. Um, he walked in that resurrected body for 40 days. And and we too will have new resurrected bodies for those that have gone before and for those that are left now. Um, we will enter with him back into that heavenly realm. So Jesus is now departed. The, the, the disciples are in the upper room praying. They don't know what to do next. They, they, they're kind of going back through the scripture trying to figure things out. And they realize that he said he's going to send the Holy Spirit. 
So they really don't know even know what that means uh, or what that's going to look like. But on the day of Pentecost, 10 days later for them, 50 days after Passover, they were all together. That's a common theme of the church. They got together. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at more of that in the coming weeks. Uh, and when they did, coming from this heavenly realm again, the Holy Spirit then enters into this earthly realm and rests on each person in the room. So when you receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit now comes from the heavenly realm and it enters into you in this earthly realm. And so if you picture that, the Bifrost, where they, they go from realm to realm, it's easy to see that the Holy Spirit can come from the heavenly realm and enter into this earthly realm and enter, to, enter into you and joins with your human spirit and brings you new life. You become alive in an eternal way that you never were before. Apart from Christ, we can do nothing. Apart from Christ, we have no life. We have no heavenly life. We have an earthly life. We have earthly bodies. But these bodies aren't going to make it out of this world alive. They're not going to make it. We're not going to make it out alive. Um, we've got a lot of medical advancements, but COVID has shown us that we have, we have no clue how to make it out of this earth alive, out of this world alive. So our only hope is in Jesus. Our only hope, if your hope is in beauty like we started out, you might as well enjoy it now because there's going to be nothing left for you because this world is, is going to be burned. There's going to be no beauty left in this world. Jesus will be bringing a new heaven and a new earth. There will be beauty beyond compare, beauty beyond comparison. The Spirit was giving them built the ability to speak out different languages, to reach out to the pilgrims from the remotest parts of the earth, of this realm. So the Holy Spirit comes from the heavenly realm, imparts those that are gathered together as believers in Christ, and fills them with power from on high so that they could speak foreign languages that they did not know, so that all of those that were around them would hear the gospel in their own language. The Holy Spirit did that. That's how the church started. That's how it spread throughout the whole new world. God had a plan for his church to expand his kingdom. And you and I are, the, are part of that church. We are a result of the Holy Spirit coming and beginning uh, in, at Pentecost, this new church. And this is going to be the adventure that we continue to learn about over the next coming weeks. This go, therefore go. What is your therefore? What are you here for? What is the purpose of your life? God has a purpose for you. Are you going to enter into that purpose with him? Are you going to yield yourself to what God has for you? Are, are you going to hold on to this world and the beauty of this world? Because it's fleeting. Uh, I'm not going to be able to hold on much longer. I can tell I'm not as strong as I was 40 years ago. I can't hold on like I, like my 15-year-old can hold on. He, he's going to be getting stronger over the next few years, and I'm not. It's just the way it is. So I need to start letting go more of the things of this world and start holding on to more of the heavenly things that are, that are what's going to be lasting eternally. And that's my prayer for you today. So let's end our message today on that note, that we need to hold on to the heavenly things. We, we need to stay together as the church and let the Holy Spirit have his way with us individually and corporately and know that God has a plan for you and for our church. So let's pray. Thanks, God, that you love us. Thank you that uh, you loved us so much that you gave your only son so that who might uh, ever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And um, just what a great love that was that you gave up your most precious uh, son, your most precious gift for us. Um, you traded uh, uh, our life for his life on the cross, the great exchange, his, uh, our sin for his righteousness. Uh, how, could, how and why could you do that? Why did you do that for me, Lord? I don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. And do I live worthy of that every day? No. But is your grace still being poured out on me every day? Yes. Uh, you gave me mercy from on the cross, but you pour out your grace on me every day. Um, a love that I don't deserve, uh, that you still pour on me. And I just pray that I would be a witness, a martyr. I would start um, in, in my home and then um, go out to the outermost parts of the earth. And um, I, I know that uh, you have put your spirit in me. Um, I know that there is a purpose for my life. And I pray that I would be willing... 
uh, to be a witness, uh, a martyr in the Old English translation, uh, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.